In this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to generate 3D models from just text prompts. We'll use Claude and hook it up to Blender using MCP. There'll be a quick step-by-step -step guide going through how to wire the two bits of software up together and allowing you to just flow prompts in and see design changes on your screen in seconds. It's perfect if you've ever wanted to play around with 3D design and just haven't had the time to learn how to do so. The first prerequisite that you should need is Python, so just go onto the python.org website, I'll leave a link in the description and download that and then run through the exe like any other download. After installing Python, come over to the Blender MCP GitHub repository and that is in the description below as well. We scroll on down to the installation guide and the first thing we need to do is install UV, the package manager. So what we can do is go into our command prompt and then just run pip install UV. And so that will run through, install that all for you. Mine's already installed, I can upgrade it but I'll just leave it as is for now. Next, we scroll down a little bit and go and see the Claude for Desktop integration section. All we need to do is copy this little bit of code here, go over to the Claude website as well and download the desktop version from claude.ai slash download. Once that's downloaded, we can run that by searching Claude and it will pop up like this. Good afternoon, Blake. We go over to the top left, little dashes there, go on to file, go on to settings, and then we can go down to developer and then go edit config. Once we're in here, we can pop up and go right click and you can edit it with text or a notepad um, or open it in VS Code if you've got a code editor. Um, and so it'll pop open like that. And then we see here, I've already got it set up. It'll probably be completely blank for you, but all you need to do is delete whatever's in there and Control V and that sets up that Blender MCP server. We then save that, close it, and then go into our task manager and make sure Claude gets completely shut down. Find it at the top, where are we? Claude in task, just to make sure it doesn't run in the background. And then we'll rerun it there and we're good to go. Going back onto the GitHub repo page, we'll scroll up and we'll see the different code files there. We only need the addon.py one, so we can click into that. There's a little download button up here, download raw file, we'll download that as well. Make sure that Blender is also installed, so you just go over to blender.org slash download and have that running as well. Once that's all done, we can go into Blender, open that on up, and we'll see once it loads, the kind of basic page there. Got our nice little queue, our nice little camera, etc. What we can do is go to the top left, hit on edit, and go down to preferences. From here, you'll see a list of all the different add-ons that you have, probably none if it's a fresh install. We can then go to this little drop down on here and go install from disk and it will pop up in your folders you can navigate to your downloads one or i've moved my add-on.py into here as well and so all i need to do is double click on that and then we'll see blender mcp pop up we can then close that press n on our keyboard and then we can see this little pop up on the right go over to blender mcp and then we can go connect to mcp server now the server is currently running, we can jump back onto Claude, we can do split screen however you'd like to view it, and go, hey Claude, use Blender, remove the square, and create me a sphere. And so what that will do is go check for the Blender MCP connection, we've got it running here, so you can tell that it's running by showing disconnect from MCP server, um, and we can see it wants to submit a request, and it wants to execute Blender code from Blender. And so we can go always allow if we trust it to always run through this kind of process, or for now we can just go allow once to go through and actually fact check what it wants to do. For now we'll just go allow once and we'll see what it's doing. So the first one probably was just reading to see what the environment was like, and now we see that it wants to actually delete the cube and put a sphere there. And so now we see we have a sphere in Blender. That is pretty cool. And again, that is just from one bit of text, and in a second it went and changed that for me all automatically. So all it's really doing behind the scenes is generating Python code to execute in our Blender environment and then running it through connected via MCP. So it's nothing actually too crazy. It's really, really good for these quick, fast little generations. However, it's gonna really struggle with actually some kind of complex geometry. For example, if I asked it, hey Claude, make a dragon and a snowman in Blender. And so that will go away and we'll see what that comes back with, but I'm not expecting anything really good. It can do kind of the basic geometry quite nicely, 
but it often struggles with kind of placing objects together and getting any form of real like detail. So as we see, it started to do the snowman. We've got three little ones there. It's actually done that surprisingly good, better than I thought it was going to do. And it's actually given it a little nose and a little buttons as well, which is pretty cool. Um, it is actually connected between the two different circles, but we'll see how it goes for the dragon. Um, and so we, there we go. <laughs> There's the dragon there, which is just some real basic geometry that doesn't actually look like a dragon. So I guess the snowman is quite a good one. Oh, still going. So it's given it a tail and some wings. Um, we'll see if anything else wants to be created here. Allow, give it some legs as well, which is quite cool. Nice little horns there as well. It's got given it a neck. And that might be it as well. Awesome. So as you can see, it's really good with the basic geometry, the squares, the circles, the cones, triangles, all of that sort of thing. But actually getting some really good detail is where the kind of struggle is. So like that snowman looks pretty cool. Dragon, not so much. But there are also ways around it. So in this Blender MCP pop-up, we can see that there's three different checkboxes here for different software, and they actually solve these different problems for us. For example, there's assets from Polyhaven, so that can do with the textures, we can actually make it look snowy or like the kind of scaly skin for the dragon and ask Claude to use that if we tick that. Well, there's also Hyper3D, which is the Rodin 3D model generator, which is really, really mind blowing. Unfortunately, I can't quite show you because I've actually used all this free trial API key that I got and it's a little bit expensive. But if you run this, it can actually generate mind blowingly good actual renders of dragons, animals, anything you put in, it's amazing. And you can even do image to uh, 3D model as well. For example, I found this little image of a cute little dragon. I went onto the Road and the AI website, uploaded it, and then got this 3D render back. But you can do this completely with Claude and using an API key into it as well. So if you have that free trial, it's the first time doing it, enable it and test it out. It's really, really cool. And there's a whole range of stuff. You can scroll through, use their other content as well. Like these are really, really detailed renders from very specific prompts, but it's not just your basic shapes anymore. It's the textures, it's the hairstyles, it's everything about it, which you can generate. The most recent LLM models that have been released haven't been huge groundbreaking in terms of benchmarks and performance, but it really comes down to the kind of integration that we've seen a lot of the time now. With MCP, it's allowing us to hook up these models with all our different software, allowing a huge amount of automation. I personally have no time to learn how to use Blender and generate creative kind of content. I have a 3D printer, I print designs as well on that, but now I can actually create my own designs using my own words, my own vision, my own prompt, which is really, really cool. Anyway, if you're interested in AI tutorials and guides, I post a heap of content on this YouTube channel, so leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you around.